Hey, welcome back to the garage, everyone. All right, I thought we would take a time out uh, from the complete front end rebuild on the old Cadillac here and uh, dive into the uh, rear main seal and the uh, front crank seal. So while we've got everything out of the way, well, almost, let's go ahead and pull this oil pan down and change out those seals because the back one is leaking like a sieve. Uh, first thing up, we're gonna have to disconnect this center link right here with two bolts right over there. And we're gonna take that down and maybe we can just pivot it downward without having to take this uh, loose as well. We'll need to take the exhaust system down and we'll have to take the uh, starter off as well. So that's three things we have to remove before we can get the uh, oil pan off the car. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, we've got a 9 16 here, a uh, little, little PB blaster been uh, working on our into our advantage for a little while, so that one broke loose just fine. One down, and the other one's in a tight spot. Now yeah, the exhaust is in the way. Probably should have taken the exhaust off first. We'll just see how well this goes. All right, so that was a bit of a faff, but uh, we got her down. Hey, look at that. That's gonna work out real good. I and mean, we didn't get greasy at all. One, center link has been removed. The next thing I'm gonna do is take the exhaust system down. So I'll have to bolt that from both sides and we're probably gonna do a cut right here because it's welded and I'll just get a new piece of pipe and stick that in there and we'll use clamps and some of that that exhaust uh, goop and be good as new when we're all done. In case you're wondering, yes, the battery is disconnected. So there's a weld right here. We're gonna cut it on this side of the weld. Easy as pie. And we'll go ahead and offer our exhaust system a little bit of neighborly support here. Not the best 90 degree job I've ever been accused of, but uh, that's what a grinding wheel is for. All right, let's go ahead and get these uh, bolts out of these uh, exhaust flanges. All right, uh, in tight places, Long extensions are your friend. This is a 9 16 on the exhaust flange bolts, nuts, whatever you want to call them. Good old PV blaster to the rescue. Uh-oh, my socket's not deep enough. All right, we got a longer now that's interesting. Well, that's the same size. We just got to change the angle of the dangle here. There we go. These uh, extensions with the little uh, odd shape to them give you a little bit of a pivot action. They're pretty convenient. I'm way up inside here, kind of hard to film right here where I'm at, so uh, bear with me. All right, before I go any further, I'm gonna get a piece of uh, wire and tie this thing up somewhere. All right, that'll prevent too much carnage. Keep things from falling down on people, namely myself. This car was well-maintained. Uh, the previous owner uh, worked for Cadillac, actually, for a dealer, the story I was told. This car was bo uh, bought in uh, Ohio, and that's where it lived. Spent its days in uh, Cadillac, Cadillac dealerships undercover most of the time. 
Well, that one's gonna be stubborn. Figured it'd be the last one. Whew. All right, that's gonna be, I broke it loose, but I'm gonna get uh, some help. There we go. Huh, stud came out with it. I guess I grabbed onto two nuts. Look at that. Well, that was inappropriate. There we go. No problemo. And we avoided uh, carnage using our wire to hold our part in the air. That worked out well. I wonder what she sound like now if we cranked her up. Probably like a tractor. <laughs> All right, next up is the starter. I tell you what, I don't miss taking starters off laying on my back, that's for sure. All right, we'll just take a quick uh, couple of snapshots here to uh, avoid any, any confusion in the near future when we uh, reassemble. So uh, I think up next, I'll uh, disconnect the wires from the solenoid. <laughs> most, most of the country boys down here call it a solenoid, <laughs> comically. Anyway, I don't know, I, I called it a solenoid forever until I was, I don't know, 40 or something. But like, you know, S-I-L, I don't know why I did that. It's part of the Southern accent, you know? Anyway, so, uh, but it is a solenoid, S-O-L, solenoid. I'm gonna disconnect the solenoid and uh, wires and then we'll take the ground off and then we'll yank the bolts out and pull her off the car and the, the strap right up there too. So, yeah, that's a nice extinct for the main power. I know all this information is in the book, you know, and all that, but you know what? You tape the wires that go together and you ain't got to think about it when you go back. All right, we got our little wires here. We've got 11.30 seconds. Working. It's been a while. I haven't changed the starter out in, I can't remember when. Last starter I changed out was on my Corvette. That's been 15 years ago, at least. All right, little wire goes on the bottom. Y'all remember that now. I just don't want to think about it, you know, when I'm going back, when I put it back together, I just want to know. Little wire on the bottom. That's all I want to know. You ever have that conversation with that genius that says, you know, yeah, man, my car won't start. You know, I bet it's your solenoid. I could leave that strap connected to the engine block. So I'm going to take the uh, small nut off of the uh, strap that connects to the uh, engine block and leave the strap connected to the engine block. There's no real reason to take that off. And the strap is not readily a fastened to the engine block anyway. Huh. See there, you discover things when you take them apart. All right, next, next up is the ground strap. That looks like a 9 sixteenths. It is, hopefully. Let me tell you what about your grounds, folks. When's the last time you checked your ground on your car? Your ground connection on your car is the number one most important electrical connection there is. You can hook up the power all you want, but if your ground is no good, you're not going anywhere. And the electricity will try to find other ways to get back to ground, and that includes leaching its way through your electrical system and ruining everything. So your ground better be tight, folks. I'm telling you, you'll burn up a car's electrical system in a hurry if you don't have a good ground. All right, just one bolt left here. There we go. Man, look at that. We got our three big items out of the way. We got the exhaust, the starter, and the steering linkage. We're cooking with gas. See, up next, let's get this uh, inspection cover off. Man, it has been hot, hot, hot today. About 97, 98. Heat index way over 100, probably 105, 108, something like that. And uh, just started raining. So I opened up the garage door to let it cool off in the shop. Yeah, that'll be a good evaporust candidate right there. All right, so I'm gonna show you what my brand new uh, torque converter looks like. Not that it's uh, any sight to be seen, but uh, it is new. 
Uh, when I bought this car several years ago, I believe it was 2016, I had the transmission rebuilt. I know that sounds silly. The transmission was fine, but the car had 94,000 miles on it and it was nearly 50 years old. So you know what? I had the transmission rebuilt. Anyway, the transmission in this car is like golden butter. It is fantastic. Good old uh, Buick Osmo Cadillac Turbo 400. It is absolutely fantastic. This transmission is so good that Rolls-Royce put them in their cars back in the 70s. Okay, we're getting ready to remove the oil pan now, so I thought I would review a few steps. In section 130 of the uh, service manual uh, covering the replacement of the rear main seal, we're going to remove the oil pan as described in, in note 128A. We'll go through that uh, here shortly. This is actually the, the uh, steps that we've been doing up to now, is removing the three big items and getting everything out of the way and getting ready to uh, disconnect the uh, oil pan uh, from the car. So next, after we get the oil pan off uh, to carry on with the rear main seal replacement, we're going to loosen the two screws to hold the bearing cap on. Uh, we're going to take the lower half of the bearing cap off. We're going to make a special shoehorn tool. You know, and what comically, what they do in the manual is they said, what you should do is use a piece of metal such as a metal banding strap. I don't have any metal banding straps lying around. You know that thick spring steel they make those banding straps for crating for making wooden crates i think that's what they're talking about uh, so i have none of that laying around uh, <laughs> extremely hard uh, spring very thin sheet metal steel uh, that you can make this tool with three inches long that way two inch uh, tang out that way and an eighth inch wide this is shoehorn a lot of the uh, rear main seals you see nowadays they come with one of these in the box. It's made out of uh, some kind of plastic or a vinyl or something. And it's to protect the seal when you insert it into the block to keep from tearing it against the, uh, the sharp edge of the block. So I'm not sure if that's going to come in this seal box. If it doesn't, we'll try our hand at making this. All right, so let's move on. And basically, this from here to here, step six through uh, on down through here is uh, how to insert the seal into the block. So we'll get to that later. After we remove the uh, engine oil pan, uh, we've got a few other things to do up top. And the reason why is I think that this, uh, time, this engine timing cover right here is leaking. <laughs> I think you'd probably agree. In addition to the crank seal. So I think if we're going to go through the, the uh, effort of replacing the rear main seal, the oil pan gasket, the crank seal, it would be foolish not to replace the timing cover uh, seal or gasket as well. So the uh, front uh, crank seal is not a whole lot to it. You got to take the harmonic uh, balancer off uh, and that's in a pre uh, previous procedure. It's very similar to any other uh, GM product. You know, use a harmonic uh, balancer uh, puller tool. And of course you have to remove the pulley to do that. And then you uh, take your seal pry tool out of there and you uh, pull the seal out and you put a new one in. You, and then uh, you put everything back together. But we're going to go a step further than that. Uh, we're going to change out the uh, front timing cover seal. Now Cadillac is calling it the engine cover seal, not a timing cover seal. And note right here, look at this. If working on an Eldorado, remove the engine. <laughs> Remind me not to buy an Eldorado. They're fine cars, don't get me wrong, but wow, all right. For the engine front cover, uh, we're going to remove the harmonic balancer. Uh, we already talked about that. Take the oil, the oil pan off. And next we're going to take some radiator hoses move them out of the way. Uh, and then we're going to take the 10 screws holding the front cover to the cylinder block and remove the cover with the water pump attached. So this is telling you, leave the water pump as it is. No need to disturb that. So, okay. I've got a complete front engine seal kit on the way from O'Reilly. We'll probably take the water pump off and just put a new gasket on it while we're at it. And we'll paint her up Cadillac blue and it'll look nice after we're afterwards. So that's your procedure for taking the front engine cover off. So once we get that off, clean all that mess up, clean up the water pump, get a new gasket on that, get the engine cover reinstalled, and we're gonna replace our uh, front uh, crank seal, okay? Then, we, because the front crank seal is gonna tap into place and it's gonna bottom out, all right, it's gonna bottom out. This is the timing cover we're gonna take off. That front crank seal is gonna bottom out onto this plate right here, right? So. Uh, this has got to go back on first clearly before we can put the uh, front crank seal in. Now, once we get all of that done, then we'll come back over here to uh, procedure number 130. 
uh, and we'll finish up on the rear main seal. I mean, I suppose we could go ahead and change them out right now, at, right after I pull this oil pan down. You could do it either way, but I think maybe I'll save the rear main seal for last and then immediately put the oil pan on straight away after that. That's the way I want to do it, so I'm going to stick into it. Let's get busy. All right, before we can go any further, we've got to drain the fluids out of the car. We're going to start with the radiator first, and then we'll drain the engine oil. All right, we're going to do this cooking show style. Need to take off our upper radiator cover. With your alternator belt still tight, you want to break your radiator fan bolts loose. And then once they're loose, you can move the fan around, make your life easier. Taking the top radiator cover off is it's essential to get to this uh, fan on this 71 Cadillac because the fan is offset quite far from the uh, water pump to get it close to the uh, radiator. In fact, the bolts are so long, you can't remove them without them hitting the radiator. All right, you got four bolts. They're pretty long, pretty tight, but stick with it, you'll get them. All right, we've got our alternator loosened up. Get our alternator belt off of there. Got our water pump pulley. This is the pulley that came with the smog pump removal kit that I got from Maximum Torque Specialties, who is now defunct. That company is no longer in business. But I think you can get the kit from another company, maybe the CAD company, or I forget who it is. Just Google it, you'll find it. All right, we need to remove the crank pulleys next. All right, that's what we look like. All right, there's the uh, crank pulley down there, and you can see the new shiny one that came with the smog pump uh, removal kit. So uh, up next, I'm gonna take the bolts out holding that pulley on, and then we're gonna pull all those pulleys off the car. Say that 10 times real fast. This kit came with ARP bolts. I think that's the only shiny parts on this car. All right, we've got to loosen the power steering pump next. I think there's three bolts, maybe four. I can't remember. The reason I'm not showing anything up close on this is because I've documented this procedure for the power steering pump and the alternator belts and all that kind of stuff in a previous video. So if you want to take a look at that, go back and look at the uh, uh, video I made on the proper procedure to uh, replace the uh, power steering and uh, air conditioning compressor uh, belts. Okay, it's power steering pump, a little, a little bit of a pain, really. You got this bolt right here. You got one hidden right here behind the pump, and the only way to get to it is with an open-end wrench, so I never really tighten it all that tight, and it seems to work out fine because you don't want to strip the head off of that thing. And you've got a hidden one right, right there. There it is, pesky rascal. All right, we've got our power steering pump loosened there. Just enough to get our belt off. That's all we need. And this particular car has two belts. All right, we're gonna go ahead and uh, drain our engine oil now. Kind of a shame, really. Just changed it not too long ago. All right, while we're there, we grab our lower harmonic balancer pulley or crank pulley. And you got this little guy right here, which is uh, the balancer, I guess. All right, that's what it looks like. Really nasty. You can tell where the uh, front crank seal has been leaking for a long time. Actually, the, the car doesn't lose a lot of oil. It just, it's just enough to make it look nasty, you know? So up next, I gotta go uh, to the parts house and pick up the kit. Uh, I gotta go pick up the rear main seal, the uh, puller for this thing, and the gasket for the front engine cover. I already have the oil pan gasket and the uh, front seal here. After that, we're gonna clean up a little bit here and uh, see if we can't pull this thing off of the engine. All right, I got my uh, puller in place up there. I had to go buy one. The one I had tried to borrow at the parts house would not work properly. It's kind of hard to film all this mess, so uh, let me get my wrenches up in there and uh, we'll see how well this goes. Got to get one up in there to grab the uh, tool to keep it from turning and a 5 8 on the uh, tool to do the work. All right, I got my big wrench. Being real cautious, the first tool I rented was an El Cheapo and it just was just junk. It just wouldn't work. I may have to do this from the top. I bet you guys knew it would come to this, didn't you? 
We got the 27 millimeter on the center part of the tool wedged against the bottom of the alternator uh, bracket. Got a 5 8 inch closed in wrench and I've got the uh, crow's foot end of it chopped off with a uh, grinding wheel so that I can get my cheater bar over it. And crank down on this thing. It's either going to explode or it will come off. One or the other. Possibly both. Hey, I think it's getting easier. All right, this will take another 10 minutes or so. That's where we are. Hopefully just a little bit more. I hope the Cadillac engineer that came up with this is proud of himself. Or herself. Some of those old codgers probably sitting around watching YouTube laughing their butts off. So here's a little bit of trivia. How many of you folks remember the Yahoo group, the Cadillac mailing list. Before there was social networking, there were message boards. Anyway, the CML, or the Cadillac mailing list, was probably the most popular uh, Cadillac discussion board out there. Shortly before the pandemic hit, Somebody had bought the rights to it or had migrated to a different server and they were going to uh, bring back the entire question and answer database on all sorts of classic Cadillac technical issues. But it never happened. I could probably dig up the link and share it with you guys. Maybe if you bug them enough they'll uh, bring it back let me get a uh, ratchet let me see if I've got it loose enough to where I can do it without the breaker bar now aha that's why I was doing that I can't use the ratchet it's too close to the uh, radiator haha -ha, shame on fool me once shame on me fool me twice shame on you what about a third time I don't know all right we got some ratcheting action finally I got a uh, ratcheting closed in five eighths and I've got another wrench wedged to the end of it and I'm able to drop it let's see is it is it now loose enough for my feeble upper body yep there it goes all right All right, we got her. Well, let's see. I'm going to have to disconnect the puller. All right, let me take that stuff apart, and uh, I'll be right back. Well, that was about the easiest thing I ever did, actually. Easiest pie. Minced meat pie. All right, that's what we got. We got our bare uh, crankshaft in sticking out of the block right there. And that's our old seal. And there's our engine cover down there, just begging to be removed from the car. All right, so here's the uh, harmonic balancer puller installer set we're using, MG521 by Maddox over at the Hobo Freight, as they uh, sometimes lovingly call it. Uh, it works. All right, here we are. This thing, let me tell you something. This thing whooped my butt today. I spent several hours uh, getting this off of the car. At first I used a loaner tool set from O'Reilly. 
a real basic uh, harmonic balancer puller set. It, it just doesn't work. The tip that goes up against the end of the crankshaft was pointed. It just wouldn't work. This oval one seemed to work fine. Uh, the best thing to use really is, you know, the, the factory would have this little tool be that round a little dimple in the middle of it to put your, so that your uh, tool would rest in there against the uh, end of the crankshaft. That's the best thing to use, clearly. Uh, but the original factory tool was pretty expensive. You can find it on eBay, but you know, I'm not going to drop 400 bucks just to do this. So this is $95 at Harbor Freight. And uh, this little oval bit right here, that seemed to work just fine. This is a very thick uh, flange here, and it's got a nice bearing in it. So that's a good tool kit. That's a keeper. Uh, here is the, uh, it's not a harmonic balancer on an old 472 500 Cadillac motor. Uh, basically, it's a harmonic balancer pulley hub uh, flange, I guess you might call it. Uh, it's keyed, so it can only uh, go on the crankshaft one way. Um, these holes are not equidistant. They are a little bit, you know, one's a little closer to the other and so on and so forth. So there's only one way you can put all this mess together. And you can see right in there how far it was onto the crank, about an inch, I would say. But uh, in order to get this thing off of the car, you can't use that little basic tool, you know, this the shape like like this it looks like a you know like a a turkey foot you know <laughs> you guys know what i'm talking about don't use that you'll just tear everything up it just won't work it'll get all cockeyed on you it just won't work you got to use something heavy duty like this okay so that just wanted to uh, give you that little tip before we wrap up uh today's video well all right folks i think i'm gonna have to cut it off right here and right now and make this part one of our rear main seal front crank seal and front timing cover uh, gasket replacement series. I think it'll only be two parts to be honest with you. Uh, but we got the hard parts out of the way, namely the removal of all of the necessary accessories on the front of the engine, which is not exactly a cakewalk, uh, and the harmonic balancer. And that is a that took me a couple hours to get that stupid thing off. I had to go buy a puller set because the one the loaner at the parts house just wasn't good enough. Uh, that thing fought me every last millimeter. And let me tell you what, it was, it was really difficult. We got all of the necessary items out of the way to uh, remove the oil pan. And the next thing we're gonna do here is remove the front engine cover and the very, let's see, we just finished removing the harmonic, harmonic balancer. Uh, we've already drained the oil and the very next step is to remove the oil pan. Guess who has to leave for work for the next few days and is not coming back to the shop? <laughs> so here's the deal i'm not going to take my oil pan off my motor and leave it exposed to a dusty environment for a week or several days i'm just not going to do that i don't want dust getting inside my engine so i'm not going to take any of these covers off until i get back so there you go impala man's garage is going to take a little bit of a break get some real work done for a change and when we get back we'll finish up all of our seals. All right, folks, that's all for now. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to be notified when part two of our rear main seal series comes out, well, don't forget to click that little bell down below. You guys have a good one. And remember to enjoy maintaining, restoring, refurbishing, repairing, and driving your classic Cadillac.